Well, hey guys, I'm sorry that this video is coming up late. I was over at my secretary's house. She, uh, Irene, if you know her, um, she was in surgery on her foot a couple of weeks ago, and it has been a very long and slow process. But she is home now, and that's great. And I was able to visit her. She's she's recovering well. So anyway, I was there, and I wasn't able to record this ahead of time. <clears throat> and the live software isn't going live correctly right now anyway, so then I had to come back here to the office, record it, upload it. So I am sorry that it is late. I do try to have these on right at noon, but if you follow these regularly, you know that sometimes they don't go up right at noon. Sorry for that. Anyway, uh, we're in chapter 22 today, Acts 22. We're going to wrap up the chapter. It starts in verse 22. It goes through the end through verse 30. And uh, Paul, Paul gets in trouble. There, there's a big riot, and he's been speaking to the rioters. We talked yesterday about the ability to share your conversion story, to tell someone what it was like for you and how you met Jesus and how he changed you and stuff. Paul does that. But uh, in verse 20 and 21, just to, to end yesterday's message and to carry into this one, it says, when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And God said to me, go, I will send you away, far away to the Gentiles. He's telling his story of where, how God has, has moved him along through life. But he makes that little statement. I'm going to send you to the Gentiles. God says this to Paul, okay? Well, this is Paul's word is his story. He's not, you know, making some doctrinal point. He's not saying Moses says it. He's saying God told it to me. I'm going to the Gentiles. Well, they don't like it. Verse 22, up to this word, they listened to him. And then they raised their voices and said, away with such a fellow from the earth, he should not be allowed to live. As they're shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. So uh, they, they can't handle it. The people cannot handle it. He says, I'm going to go bring the gospel to the Gentiles, and they, this fellow shouldn't be allowed to live. They are furious because their whole identity is wrapped up in that they are special in God's sight, and their specialness and their uniqueness for God, that they are God's chosen people and God's only people. Um, and now, oh, to hear that, Somebody could be going out spreading God's message to the outsiders, to those other people, the unclean people, the Gentiles, the Goyim. And, oh, we don't want that. Kill him. Kill him. We don't want this. And so it is this selfishness. It is this small worldview. It is this box thinking, putting God in a box, putting every bit of doctrines into a box. What Paul is saying is definitely against the grain of your traditional Jewish uh, way of thinking, Old Testament way of thinking. It's definitely against the grain of that. Paul would have said it was against the grain when he, when he was, uh, before he met Jesus. Peter, who went to Cornelius the centurion, you probably remember, I think it was chapter 10 of, of the book of Acts. God, God speaks to him in a vision. He says, hey, don't don't call unclean what I have made. Don't I, I, if I've made it. Don't call it. Un, don't call it unclean. Don't call it common. Don't just go. Yep, they're they're Gentiles. They're Roman centurion Gentiles. Go, Peter. Go. And Peter goes, and he's he's surprised that God's sending him there, and he's surprised when they receive the Holy Spirit. But he's surprised by it. But he glorifies God and says, "Hey, who am I to stand in the way? God is gonna is gonna expand His kingdom even to the Gentiles." So if you're humble, you're, you, can, you can let God expand your framework. You can let him do it. If you're not, you're not going to. And so it, it goes against the grain, and they can't handle it. They want him dead. So what happens next is also just crazy for, for our modern, you know, free, free Americans uh, the tribune, in order, verse 24, the tribune, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. Can you imagine that? Like there's an angry mob rioting, and he's like, let's go flog this guy. That means that, that, that's a, a whipping, a scourging, okay? Uh, it, it's what they did to Jesus before they put him on a cross. 
And uh, let's torture this guy until he tells us why all those guys are mad at him. Why not just ask all those guys why they're mad at him? They're unreasonable. They're shouting and rioting. So they're, anyway, um, we don't, we have a, a much, uh, I think, saner justice system than they had apparently. But when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, is it lawful for you to flog a man who's a Roman citizen and uncondemned? Paul, Paul's a Roman citizen. He said this to them in Philippi too. In Philippi, he said it after they beat him up, after he spent a night in jail without a trial, without anything. Here he says it wisely um, before they flog him. Is it? Are you allowed to flog somebody? I'm a Roman citizen. So verse 26, the centurion heard this. He went to the tribune and said to him, what are you about to do? This man's a Roman citizen. The tribune came and said to him, hey, tell me, are you, you, are you a Roman citizen? He said, yes. The tribune answered, I bought my citizenship for a large sum of money. And Paul said, but I'm a citizen by birth. So those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately. And the tribune was also was afraid for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had bound him. Paul had already been tied up, you see, which is against the law. And the guy says, hey, I, I paid a lot of money for my citizenship. And Paul's like, I was born a citizen. That doesn't make any sense to us because you don't buy your citizenship. But in Rome, you, you could pay a bribe to buy your citizenship. And um, Paul's like, no, I actually didn't. I was born into it. Like that, that was a higher status to say, I didn't even have to pay a bribe. I'm a, I'm a full bore citizen, whatever, okay? So it doesn't directly apply to us. We, we have a, a system here in the United States where um, you're not allowed to beat up anybody and flog anybody. That's just not a thing, whether it's citizen or not. Um, so praise the Lord. We live in a, a great country, right? Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, the next day, verse 30, desiring to know the real reason why he was being accused by the Jews, he, he unbound him and commanded the high priest and all the council to meet, and he brought Paul down and set him before them. And this is the beginning of Paul's trials, Paul's house arrests, Paul's the, the rest of the book of Acts. Paul is going to, he, he, he's, he's in Roman custody and they have him, and, and they've tied him up, and they were going to kind of flog him and treat him as a prisoner. His citizenship does not really allow them to do that, and he's unsafe being set out, set back free to the public. They're going to kill him in public. And so his best, like in terms of safety, best thing for him to do is to kind of stay in the Roman prison system, the Roman so-called justice system, unjust, justice, whatever. Um, and so he is going to be tied up in this slow-moving, corrupt, crazy situation. The, the, the rest of his, his life, as far as the Bible records, and, and I, I believe really the rest of his life, um, it's, it's not quite certain when Paul is finally set free from jail, and does he ever really go free? Is he ever free again? And how, when does he die? The book of Acts just kind of ends and doesn't, doesn't tell us that stuff, so I don't know. But Paul is now in the system, and he's not going to get out of it. And we're going to see how he advances the gospel even from within a corrupt system, under threat if he, if he ever goes free and walks free, which he could. He gets multiple opportunities here to just kind of go free. Hey, I'm a Roman citizen. You're not allowed to hold me in jail without trial. You're not allowed to tie me up without, a, without even being condemned or really even charged. And they're trying to figure out what are the charges because they, they, there really aren't any. Um, it's just a bunch of angry rioters. Okay. Now, what does that mean for you and me? Uh, this is just a lot of kind of information. Does it have any direct application? Well, I see Paul keeping calm while everybody else is just in a, uh, roaring and raging and going crazy, okay? Verse 22, up till this, they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, away with such a fellow from the earth, he should not be allowed to live. They're shouting, throwing off their cloaks, flinging dust in the air. They're going crazy, okay? This is the angry rioting mob that was rioting a few minutes ago, and they're rioting again now. And uh, they're going nuts, okay? Paul's holding calm. 
He motions with his hand. We saw a few days ago. They silence. They listen to him for a bit. He, he says nothing inflammatory. He does not insult them. He's not mean. He doesn't yell at them. He doesn't blame them. He, he in fact, looks for common ground with them and talks about how he used to be the same way. Like, Paul, Paul is the voice of reason here, completely, okay? And they're going nuts. So how about the other guy? How about the law and order, the, the Romans, this, this tribune guy, this... Uh, the centurion, these, these, these are the law and order. They're supposed to be the voice of reason. They're supposed to be the ones that lock up the bad guys, put down the riots, send everybody home back to life, get, get, you know, knock it off, guys. They're supposed to do that. They're about to flog a guy who's a citizen without a charge, not even knowing what the charge is. They're going to beat him up and whip him until he tells him what the charges are. That's ridiculous, Okay. Um, he's, a, he's a citizen, so they have to stop, but they've already stretched him out and, and tied him with ropes. So they've already done that wrong. Um, they haven't even asked if he's a citizen. There's no, there's no Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law, whatever the rest of it goes. Um, I only know it from the movies. I had never had it happen to me. Um, so they're doing it wrong. Okay, then he tells them, he drops this on them, hey, I'm a citizen. The guy a cops and, and owns up to that he kind of paid off some bribe in order to get his citizenship. So he's, you know, his moral standing is has been, you know, kind of demoted here. Uh, and then um, they're afraid, okay? Those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately, and the tribune also was afraid, Okay. Everybody, the angry mob and the law and order and the, the governing official sorts of people are out of control, except Paul. And Paul is the victim. Paul is the guy who did nothing wrong. He went above and beyond in order to avoid even the appearance of doing anything wrong. There's no charge against him. They've accused him of a few things. We saw they say he's an Egyptian assassin. Not true. They say he brought um, Trophimus, the, the Gentile or whatever, in the, uh, into the temple. He didn't. They've accused him of things, but there's no actual charges. Those, those are kind of dismissed. They're like, nah, that's not it. Let's beat him up. Let's flog him until he, he tells us what the charges are. It's ridiculous. Paul, if anybody should be outraged, if anybody should be afraid, it's Paul. Paul should be afraid that he might get whipped and flogged for no reason. He should be afraid that these angry rioters might just kill him, trample him, stone him to death for no good reason. Um, if anybody should be afraid, it would be Paul, but he's not. If anybody um, should be the voice of reason, maybe that should be the, the, the Roman leaders or something, and yet they're not. They're taking unreasonable actions, and now they're running away and afraid. It's, they, they go out immediately. They withdraw from him immediately. They, 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 they run away. They're afraid. Because they've done something wrong, and they know they've done something wrong, and they're like, we better not dig this hole any deeper. Um, you know, he could, he could sue them or whatever. Um, it's not the same as modern America, but you're not allowed to treat a citizen that way. Um, and so uh, the next day, desiring to know the real reason why he's being accused, they unbound him and commanded the chief priests and all the council to meet, and he brought Paul down and set, them, set him before them. They expect Paul to be reasonable. They're like, yeah, let's bring Paul out here, guys. You know, Paul, Paul will be reasonable. He's, 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 he's been honest with us the whole way. And so that, that, that example, okay, what, what do you have going on right now? Well, you're probably not being accused by an angry mob and threatened with flogging by the cops. I assume you're not experiencing any of that stuff. But we do have an angry mob mentality running pretty wild in this country. It's very easy to get caught up in that kind of stuff. And uh, where's your hope? Where's, what's your voice sound like? Are you the voice of reason? Are you the voice of fear? Are you the voice of accusation? Are you just the angry shout, throw dust up in the air, and go <laughs> act like a wild, ridiculous person? Um, we got a lot of that. We have a lot of it. It's on the news right now. Which voice are you? Which voice are you going to be? How are you going to deal with all these angry, fearful, loud, rioting, panicking, fearful voices around us? How are you going to handle these things? The world's looking for answers. 
they're looking for a voice of reason, some of them. Some of them are, are, are just the angry mob, and they're whatever. Hopefully, somebody comes along and finds a way to speak their language, silence them. Okay? It might not be me, it might not be you, but if every Christian maintains the composure that Paul has here because their faith is in the Lord, then, then everybody will be reached. Okay? Um, I don't, I, just because you and I don't know how to do it doesn't mean God can't do it. All right, but I know this. I know if we're just, if we sound the same as everybody else, if our response is the same as everybody else, these guys push that way, so the cops push this way, and we feel like we have to choose one side or the other, and just our voice sounds just like that, man, useless, useless. We need to be Christ-like. We need to handle it. Jesus handled his trials the same way. He had the same false accusations, the same corrupt court system, the same garbage, the same threats. He was not a Roman citizen, or if he was, it doesn't indicate anything that he was. He didn't stand up for those rights. Um, he went through a few fake trials. Um, Pilate, the Roman authority, washes his hands, says, I don't find any guilt in this man. Um, Jesus, Jesus lost all of his rights, and he maintained his Christly behavior, okay? And we're to be like him, all right? So especially since you're not on trial, you're not being flogged in the, the back room of the, the barracks. You're not in this. So, man, we definitely need to be the voice of reason. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Trust him, and I'll see you tomorrow at noon. God bless.